Hi, I'm Jim Doty. And I'm Christina Dodge. Welcome. And welcome to Dialogue. Uh, Christina, we have a very interesting guest, uh, Ivana Lowell, who's just written Why Not Say What Happened, incredible book. I, I stayed up late to read it last night, and I never stay up late for anything. It's Truly riveting. Truly a tell-all <laughs> memoir uh, it about is. your famous parents, literary parents, Yes. Uh, and um, a blue blood family, the, the Anglo-Irish Guinness family. Exactly. Uh, I exactly. think many of our viewing audience know about Guinness beer yes. and I know your I descendants do. It's good of that. For you. <laughs> and, and ironically a lot, uh, enough, alcoholism, uh, alcoholism plays a major role. Yes, ironically. I know. It's kind it of is like ironic. The, 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 the family sort of prosper from the, also from the family disease. It sort of, it is very ironic. So now, why now? Uh, why write this, this tell-all book now? I think it was, well, my mother died, and then I had this amazing revelation, which is in, in the book, about who my father was, and, and, um, and I was sort of stewing about it, and I was very, you know, I was sort of upset and uneasy, and I did go to a, a new shrink, <coughs> and I started to tell her about my, you know, at the beginning, when you see a new shrink, you have for 45 minutes of giving your history. Yes. And I sort of said my history as I as I do kind of by rote, you know, and this happened and that happened and that happened. And then off, at the end of the session, she just turned at me and said, turned to me and said, "Oh my God, it's amazing you're still standing. That's one of the worst stories I've ever heard." And, uh, and uh, coming from a psychiatrist, that's kind of that's kind yes, of that's rather, that's a lot of stories. Rather a surprise and. Um, yeah. And she said, you, you know, you're just, you're a miracle. And um, I would say she's right. I mean, there was just one thing after another in the book. I, I just was, I couldn't wait to meet you. I wanted to, That's I was so angry nice. at your mother and I wanted to come and give you a big hug Aww. and say, oh, you know, oh so my God, sweet. it's, and, and to see you here today, you seem like you've gotten through it all very well, I would say unscathed, but I know, <laughs> you know, it appears that way, but it, yes. but it wasn't. And your, fa your stepfather, Robert Lowe, famous poet. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and uh, tell us about him, because I, he died when you were very when young. Was, yes, when I was 12, I adored him. He was, um, he came into my life when I was five, and I can't really remember why he came, but he said my mother brought him home one day, and he never seemed to leave. Um, <laughs> and he, um, but he was like. Did you know then he was not your natural father? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. I did, but he just automatically was sort of very, very paternal and cozy and sweet, all things that no one ever associates when you. In sort spite of, of his bipolar problem. Exactly, because when he wasn't, I mean, when he wasn't being manic. He was really sort of very loving and and caring, and he was sort of childlike. So, to as a five, six-year-old, he was it was like having a sort of play play friend or someone someone that you could sort of joke around with. And um, and he was I mean, he was obviously writing a lot, but he'd read out loud his poetry to me, and and then I'd read out loud to him. And I think that's where I got my love of words and literature and. Um, because he was just such a, he was a wonderful influence. It really came through a really, a very loving relationship, which was surprising given his condition. Yes. And evidently when he played out that other condition, it wasn't in a mean way, it was just he took on different characters. But then you lost him, and then tragically, not long after that, you lost your My, sister. Yes, yeah, six months My later. My goodness, is a young, what, I know, eleven year old girl, and you lose. So tell us about the loss of your sister. Well, it was uh, as you said. It was six months after um, we'd, we'd lost Robert, and um, and actually the. One of the last memories I have of my, my sister was going to pick out funeral clothes to go to Robert's funeral. So, um, and I was at boarding school, and, and they came and told me that my sister, she was 18, had died of a heroin overdose, um, oh which God. was really, which was so, it was, it was just, you just, I, I, I thought when they, they came in and they had that look that people have, and you get to recognize it when you have experienced a lot of death, that they have this sort of look of, of, sort of unease and, and, and a sort of sense of dread came in and I thought something terrible had happened to my mother. That seemed like the most natural thing. Yes. And then they told me that my sister had died and it was just, and, and then after that my mother went to pieces and it was just, it was. Did you internalize your sister's death and maybe look at yourself and say this, this could happen to me or? Well, of course, because I, I was at a boarding school that there was a lot of drugs and, um, and, and I, was, I was terrified, actually I've always been terrified of drugs, so actually I didn't ever, 
I didn't ever go that, that route, thank goodness. And, um, but yes, of course, because it's so young, it's so, so young, 18, it's just, you know, and she seems so cool and alive and vibrant and just so, so wonderful. And so, so you just can't believe someone like that could just, could, could die, but it really can happen, obviously. What a tragedy. It did that bring you and your mother closer together, that tragedy? Uh, ultimately or? it did. Mm -hmm. At the, um, when it first happened, she was, she was distraught, completely distraught. And, and so we were, so my sister, I had a, 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 an older sister and a younger brother, and we were kind of left to fend for ourselves for a while because um, we had nannies, obviously. And, but um, my mother was kind of out of, <laughs> she was out of action for, for a while. But she, wow. she remarried several times. No, right? not after Robert, she never did. No, no, a after Robert, no, that no. was. She married, her first husband was Lucien Freud, the painter, yeah. and then she married as well Sitkovitz. Who was a, a famous composer. composer? Yes, right. And, and then Robert Lowell, and then after that, she said, "I'm not marrying again." But I think three is enough. Actually, I was. Like, yeah, well, I there were three... men coming in uh, and out of her yes, life. Yes, there were. There were boyfriends and um, various And that's people. why the, this question about your your natural father the, was, was an issue. But you thought before that that uh, the composer was. Yes, your I, that's what I've been led to believe. Um, well, he was. I was six when he died, and there were three sisters. One of them now is dead, and I just thought I was one of the three sisters. Um, and that's what and I. And your believed. mother led you. She led me to believe that. Even though she, she knew that that wasn't the case. Well, if she knew or she didn't know, it was all oh. very ambivalent. I, I, I think she'd she'd left my, uh, my not father. <laughs> she'd left Israel Sitkovitz and had um, moved. She'd actually come out here to uh, to California, and then she was in in New York, and so. I think she was sort of having a little bit of a, um, uh, what, uh, maybe some liaisons while, um, while she was married, or, but, or the marriage was crumbling anyway. So I don't know, she never really told me, and I thought we told each other everything. We were very, very close. Um, but she never, she never gave even a hint that, um, that he wasn't my father. Wow. So. But wow. then later, which is really, I, know, I don't want to give away the book because it, is, it is kind of a mystery. So we won't give away it's who your father actually turns it, out to be, to, but uh, certainly but a character But you had really strong book. male figures, right? Yes. I mean, they weren't necessarily all fatherly no. like um, the last one, but they were very strong male figures. Do you find yourself attract or going, being attracted to certain male types based on older. those early figures? Older men. You're attracted to older men. I think I'm always looking for my father figure. It's like, uh, yes, father? Uh, yes, yes, which father? That's the thing, which one? Several which one? stepfathers. And, lots of stepfathers and, yeah. um, and lots of uncles. <laughs> well, how did the DNA part of it happen? Well, Could after, you explain that, that you finally definitely find out who your father's true DNA? Yes, I did the, I did the DNA test. Uh, after my mother died, literally the day after my mother died, I went and had lunch with one of her, her oldest friends, and I was in this kind of complete sort of fog sitting at lunch. I was, I was drinking a lot, and I was just in a complete shock, I guess. And, and, um, and throughout, this, she was sort of blabbering away, and I heard her say, but of course you know who your father was, don't you? And I was kind of like, that sort of jolted me back to reality. And I was like, well, yeah, uh, Israel, dad. And she went, huh, oh, no, 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 no. And, um, and after I had my, um, after lunch, I went back and I phoned my sister. And I said, um, you know, I had the weirdest lunch with this, this friend of my mother's. Um, you know, she said that, you know, that Israel might not be my father. And, and I thought she was going to say, oh, that's just rubbish. And she said, oh, sweetie, I think it might be true. And then I called my grandmother, the, the sort of wonderful character that's... Um, it's a great line. Please, please share <laughs> oh, that. My grandmother, who is a sort of a good old time aristocrat in England. And I said, I don't think Israel Sikovic is my father. And she said, oh, darling, thank goodness. That, might, that means you might not be Jewish after all. Oh, she said, God. make sure that you tell all your future beaux that you might not be Jewish because you'll stand much better chance of getting a husband. Not the uh, most sympathetic <laughs> response. Just completely sort of, and I was like, okay, thank you for that advice. So I didn't get any sort of clarity from these phone calls. And, and then I sort of decided I'm just not going to think about it. Enough has happened and I, was going to, I mm -hmm. put it aside until I got pregnant with my, with my daughter, who's now 11. And then 
I sort of thought genetics, you know, genetics. I, I, it's, and particularly when I was went to see when I was pregnant, and I would go to the doctor, and she'd say, "Well, you know, can you tell me about you know, um, about your, your parents, and do they have any diseases, and do they have any?" You know, and I kind of didn't. And I go, My father, which one? And I, I didn't know, and I felt so silly. I was the answer like, where the genetic one it, really becomes it, it, uh, really important. important. Yeah. And I yeah. kept on sort of having to check off these boxes. You know, was there any history of? And I just realized I didn't, I didn't know. And so um, I decided that I was gonna have the DNA and I called two of my, two of the suspects <laughs> and said, would you mind doing uh, the DNA? And, and they were both? They were both very sweet and said, absolutely. Although they both thought that they were my father. Well, you have to read the book. Oh, it's I know, I'm not, not gonna not give it away. An early, at an early age, you were sexually abused. I yes. mean, it's one thing after another. I know, in this it book, sounds but, so depressing, uh, but I promise the book is not depressing. But it's very, kind of, very young, sexually I abused. Was, I was. And we lived in a very, very big house in, in the English countryside, and my mother was married to Robert Lowell, and they were having their own sort of tumultuous um, existence, I suppose. They were, but my mother was drinking a lot, Robert was, you know, bipolar, and, mm. and, um, and so at that point, not very much attention was paid to, to the children. And we had a succession of nannies and um, odd job men and people. It was a very kind of strange setup. And I had a room which was sort of quite far away from the main hat. From it was in the back of the house, and my mother and stepfather were up in the sort of front. And um, and my nanny, who I was actually very close to, her husband used to pay me nightly visits. I was six years old, and he would come in and um, molest me. And um, and I talk about it in the book, and I uh, and it's 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 something that's not discussed very much. But I actually kind of I didn't enjoy it, but I I almost I almost welcomed the abuse because mm -hmm. it felt kind of comforting and. It's not uncommon. I understand. The attention. I, I think it can't be that yeah. uncommon because I think yeah. you do want. I think any young. I think a six-year-old wants to be told that they're beautiful and that they're loved and that. Um, and again, an older person. And an person. older man telling you that. And, and also, mm. it meant that I didn't have to put my light out. I was allowed to have my light on because <laughs> I hated going to, I hated going to bed because it was so dark and creepy. And so. Um, oh, I love your honesty. Uh, um, and, it, and it makes the book, it makes you so much more endearing, I yes. think. It's, it's such an amazing read. But you have had such a, a wild ride of life. I feel like you've lived five lifetimes. Do you now look back and wish that? some of these occurrences didn't happen to you or do you, are you have you made peace with them and said now that your life is rich because of them i think absolutely i think well everything shapes you as, as uh, shapes the way you are as an adult i think all your obviously every childhood event shapes shapes the person that you're going to become and i think it did make me a much sim more sympathetic um, person and um, yes. more tolerant and i hope that i pass that on to my daughter and I'm not, I'm not angry. I think there was one point when I was sort of angry about it, but then I realized that actually, although, although there were some horrific things, there was actually sort of some wonderful things, and I was privileged to meet these people and to sort of know these people. And, and my mother, for all her faults, she was sort of, she did, I, she loved me and I loved her. And it sounds sort of, sort of strange, because as you say, there was so much neglect and abuse, but, um, I, I, I just adore, I adore my mother. And, mm. and wow. No, I think that came through very clear that uh, I was reading it and I was angry and I was saying, why isn't she more angry? <laughs> <It's so sweet. laughs> Even and in this abuse, it wasn't until a tragedy in oh. your life, the fire, that oh. actually, uh. it was so distant that it took that. I know, it took a huge, horrible event to stop. Uh, horrible event. Yeah. Oh yeah, but what I guess I didn't get what wasn't clear is after the tragedy when you were burned, you were 11 or 12 years old? Or no, you no, were I younger? Six. Oh, you were I was six. six. Yeah. So how did they find out then? Or did you start telling people what had I occurred? I didn't tell anyone until I was 12. I was so, I was, it was that combination oh. of shame, guilt, and also a fear that somehow I'd get into trouble. I think you think that you've done something of course, wrong of course, and, that, yes. and that it was something heinous and that you were part of it. and. Um, and so I never, t I didn't tell anyone until I was 12 and then I did tell my mother and she was completely horrified and she had no idea 
which, which was amazing because I, I mean, I, I know exactly what's happening to my daughter every minute. I would know if someone yeah. was paying her nightly calls. Yeah. So because yeah. are you more hyper vigilant with your daughter because of all the experiences that you have gone through? I, well, my room's right opposite hers. <laughs> so, <laughs> not on opposite ends I mean, of the castle. So, so no, I can hear every peep that she makes, so I'm, I'm <laughs> pretty vigilant. But she's very, yeah. she's very wise. She knows that that happened to me, and, oh, and she, she, okay. she says, I'm going to do self-defense, and I would scream, and I would do all this, and she's, yes. so she's very sort of... Yes. She's very strong. You were also allowed to start drinking at a very early age. Well, we lived in Ireland, of course. So, <laughs> so it was like water. I you know, have a beer? I know, we're, I know we're not allowed to. I, um, so I'm not being um, disparaging about the Irish, but it was a sort of, it's part of the culture Except there. It. Yeah. It's like in Italy. They well, a lot of the European, wine. yes. Yeah. yes. Exactly. So, um, and also when I was, when I was six, my, my mother and Robert would always be sitting, they'd be sitting by the fire listening to classical music and, um, reading and I would go, go down to say goodnight and there would always be some wine and I was allowed to have sips of the wine um, and I thought it tasted delicious. I thought it was so, it was, made me feel loved and warm and, and I associated alcohol with kind of feeling loved and warm, yes. warmed and wanted yes. and, and fitting in and, um, and so, so I think that was also a sort of, a, my association with alcohol was always actually as a positive one. Which was which was which was sort of strange, given it started so young, and then in Ireland, of course, that's what you do. I mean, yes, it's just you yes. fit in by doing by doing that. Now, when did you realize that you have lived an extraordinary life, and that putting it down on paper would be very very intriguing for others to read? Maybe even cathartic. It was. Cath yes. I think after that visit to the to the to therapist, the, really? I think it. Really, I was in the cab. I was in New York, and I was in the cab. Driving, driving back to my apartment, and I started thinking, you know, she's right. I'm, I'm amazing, and I started feeling a little bit chuffed. You know, I thought, well, yes. so actually, you know, I, I am incredible, and because I've always sort of beaten myself up slightly, and yes. for, you know, for oh, not being perfect, and having, you know, had had the alcoholism or having the alcoholism, and sort of, so I'd always been sort of feeling less than, and then and I started thinking, you know, I should think about this as, I've, you know, I'm amazing. I'm a survivor. I've been through a lot, but had come through and and um, and I just started writing that that afternoon I just started and it kind of poured out it started it was almost wow. like the book wrote itself it kind of it was gushing out it was was it amazing. easy to remember and recall all the the names and the incidents completely, and, completely yes. easy to remember wow. because it was so ingrained and and it was all it was like a sort of movie almost just just, it was just like I just had to write it, get it out, get it down, get it. You didn't have a lot of formal education. Your last no. um, formal grade was what grade? I ran away from boarding school yes. when I was 15. Oh and, um, but, okay. you're, but you got a great education, I think, from all of your, the, the people your mother associated with. Yes, by well, I was lucky because she, we, she, her friends were incredible. She always had lots of writers and artists, and, and reading was always something that just was... was was natural and and, even, and when I was I was very lonely as a child so I found great solace in reading and um, so I'd read anything and, and we had a wonderful library and Robert's wow. books were, were incredible so. so you're a lifelong learner which is the best yes. Yes, kind exactly. of education really especially with that love of reading yes. how did you deal with the alcoholism because uh, well, I, went I know there are many in our viewing audience a very common problem yes but of course the, the, and there's so the much not to crack is how you deal with it yeah well there's a whole Charlie Sheen anti-AA <laughs> thing at the moment which is yes. which is unbelievable and I've been um I went to I did go to rehab yeah. which was which is which was very helpful. It, so you'd recommend it? I would. I would definitely recommend it if, you, um, it's, if only not just because it's just a place that you can just go and get away from your normal life, get away from all the stressors and the um, and the actual whatever, whether it's drugs or alcohol or whatever you're you're prone to to um, to indulge in or overindulge in. And it just gets you away from all of that, and you can sort of then just focus for a little bit. It's a thirty days or something, and it's just a band aid. It's not. It you know once you get out, that's when the real work starts because you're back in your, in your, you know. What is that? And so what's the real world? What is that? How did you deal with it? For me, yeah, the real world is um, well. The writing has helped a lot, and and support hmm. friends. Just a lot of, of, of support. Interesting. And so the yes. support and also your own work and passion. And passion. And, and, and with this book, you, you found your passion. Yes. Now, you also went out with uh, 
Bob Weinstein of the I Weinstein did. Company, uh, Harvey and Bob Weinstein. Yes. Many Academy Award winners for their company. Yes. And it was King's eventually Speech. sold to Disney, and now they're on to a new company and so on and doing very well. But you went out with Bob Weinstein. There's a kind of humorous, well, kind of tragic. <laughs> well, most it's humor funny. has a I little tragic side to it. Yes. Going out to the Academy Awards. Could you share that story with yes, us? Yes, absolutely. I was very excited. I was going to the Academy Awards, and I, I think it was the English Patient was their movie that year, and um, it was a great movie. It was one of their movies. Yes, the it was one of their movies. Yeah. It was up for best, best picture, and and I was very excited. And I went and got a John Galliano. Oops, <laughs> no, he's in big trouble right now. But <laughs> <laughs> I suddenly just really liked John Galliano. But I went and got this John Galliano dress, and it was fabulous. And it kind of fish tailed and pulled down onto the floor in this sort of amazing. It was sort of had this amazing silhouette. And um, and I was and I was so excited about the dress and I and we came out here and and actually Miriam Weinstein who's the the, the mirror mm -hmm. of Miramax the mother. Um, the mother she she was having her hair done and I was with her hairdresser and I got myself a sort of chignon I thought I looked very elegant and sophisticated and um, and I I thought I was just so red carpet ready I just thought you know because I was an actress and this was the actress I'd always wanted to be and never got to be and so and. Um, and I went and knocked on the hotel door where Bob was, expecting him to be so rapturous and say how fantastic I looked. And, <laughs> and, and he just looked at me and just said, what the hell do you think you're wearing? What? You look like an old lady. You can't walk in that dress. It's too long. You've got you've to fix it. Fix that dress. It's too... He used a lot of swear words. Um, it's too long. And I was like, this is... I actually thought he was joking for a minute. I really, I kind of started feeling sick, and I thought he was he joking. joking. And then he wasn't joking, and <laughs> and he said, "You can't walk in that dress." And I actually could walk in it because I could hook it up and walk perfectly yes. well. But I was very insecure, and I sort of, you know, I think every woman is really insecure about how they look. And if someone tells Especially you that when you they're look, younger, yes, yes, and yes. I think if you sort of told you look awful, then you sort of think, "Well, I must look awful." Yes. And um, and so he called down to housekeeping and said, you know, get up here. And, and these scissors. two ladies came <laughs> and they took away the dress and it came back and it was just cut, the whole dress. And I, I put it on and it was just like a sort of black sack of just ick. And, um, and I just took my hair out of it. He said my hair looks like an old lady's hair, so I took my hair out. And I, Oh, and I ended up just going to the Oscars looking like a sort of bag lady. Hear <laughs> um, um, what should be one of the most exciting know, evenings in a lifetime. Cinderella moment ruined. Is, is this it was horrible. Uh, just, <laughs> my I, went them, I did go to them. I did go to them again, and, and, and actually we do laugh about it now. And he's a, he's still a good friend. Of, and you yeah. work for the company. Yes, I work for Harvey. And what did what did you do? I was doing, um, I was the literary, um, the literary person. So anything to do with books or um, looking for movies. So a book that book. you would review it to see whether it had to see whether potential would, yes, to be exactly. made into a motion and picture. To, yeah, to a motion picture and then just to find well, writers. Speaking and so of which, I know. What, what's your, well, since, you're, what since you're, you have experience, <laughs> I, did, it, I, I think, can tell you after reading it that it definitely would be a fantastic movie. Oh good, I think so too. I think it, it really could. The characters are so amazing. And, um, yes, they are. and I think with all the love of everything British right now and with the royal wedding and, um, well, the, and the King's, the King's speech, speech and Downton Abbey yes. we were talking about. Which is a true story and this would be a true story yes. of famous people. Your exactly. mother's a famous the writer, real your, your stepfather, Robert Israel, I mean a famous yes. musician, it's one yes. person after another, I let know. alone your real father, which we won't get into, I know. famous person. He was a famous person, exactly, yeah. and he, he was a famous writer too. So I think, I mean, I'd love, I'd love it to be a movie. I think it would be so much fun, and, um, and all, I, I think it would be, I think it's a good, there's some lessons to be learned in this book, and um, as well as some sort of entertainment. I mean, it's not all, it sounds like, People sort of say, "Oh my God, you know, it must have been so terrible." And and I actually sort of thought I had a rather good childhood. That's what's so. That's I what, think it's wow. a great book for, for many people deal with issues and problems and challenges in yes. their life, and you've been able to overcome. Yeah, I, lo so I love with it. With really, a very positive attitude. Yeah, yeah. it comes and across. You've, and you've you've survived it all, and you've come through. Mm. And in reading the book, you can see how how 
you know, a certain kind of spirit gets you through these problems. Absolutely. I think sense of humor is the key. He <laughs> don't take yourself too seriously. And, and just, I mean, it's great. Now I think of any, anything as material for my next book. If something crappy happens, I'm yes. sort of like, I'm going to use that. Well, speaking <laughs> of which, you, you were in Ireland and, uh, recently, and, and you, there were, you're inspired again to write another yes, book, Yes, there's right? so many stories. Oh, my goodness. That family are, stories? Fam well, there are family this stories. This is Guinness family stories? Yes, everyone's a character. There's, uh, there's so many wonderful characters. Um, Will your grandmother appear in this next book uh, <laughs> as a prominent? I might have to leave her to sort of rest in peace. I think I might leave my grandmother and my mother alone. It's just like, you know, I've dredged them up, and I think they can, they can, they can, re they can rest for a little bit, and I'll concentrate on someone else. <laughs> so or maybe you make something up. Become Coming like an investigative reporter that you're and I, people are telling you stories and you're beginning to think yeah. how can that be part of a, a uh, corpus of a book? Absolutely, I think so. I think that's um, and then you re realize that someone said, you know, are you thinking about your next book? Are you thinking about material? And I said yes. And he said, uh oh, you've got the disease, you've got the bug, uh, you've got the writing bug. So, yes. um, but maybe I'll make something up. We'll just disguise. Uh, reality a little. <laughs> it might be a little bit easier because then you don't have to offend anyone. But, um, but actually, I don't think I did in this book. I think it's all very done in a very kind of very tastefully. Yes, and generous spirit. I'm not mean spirited at all. And no. um, and and I think that comes across that I sort of actually loved every single one of the characters in this book. I mm -hmm. I, I did sort of love them. And, and yeah, that um, comes across very clearly. Yes. When someone so thinks, for, for example, about. We just have a few minutes left. Uh, doing a memoir, even even not publishing it, but but this is wonderful for your daughter to know about the family heritage. Yes. I know, and, the, and, and a grandmother, a great grandmother that you would never get to meet. Or uh, how does one go about doing that? It's um. Well, I I decided I was going to be completely honest in this one, and I, I just was like, if I'm going to tell the story, that's why the title. It's actually a title from a Robert Lowell poem. Your candor is refreshing. Oh, that is really amazing that you were so open about everything. I think, if, and it's why not say what happened. I think if you're going to write a memoir, what's the point of of hiding anything? And and right. um, and so so I decided I'd just be completely candid, as you say, and 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 just let it all spill out and um, I did have a lovely I have a wonderful editor <laughs> at Knopf so she would sort of sometimes just to tone it down a little bit if she thought that it was just going you know if it was too I don't want anyone to feel just depressed when reading this book it's not meant to be depressing no. or no I think it's, uh, no. it's humorous but uplifting in yes. that you, you're a survivor I know we're, so we're out of time Ivana, oh, thank but you so much to our viewers this is a great book why not say what happened which is a line from Robert Lowell's exactly. a poem of it's his the last line of his poem epilogue yeah. why not say what happened and what I an incredible I heritage uh, family heritage uh, and and, sh and thank you for sharing it with, no, with, with me and thank with you so much with